What is up you guys? My name is Austin Marks. Um, welcome to my YouTube channel. So I'm currently a respiratory therapist. I've been a respiratory therapist for about two years now. So most times when people ask me what I do for a living, what I do for an occupation, I tell them that I'm a respiratory therapist and they have no idea what I mean. So what do I tell them? I tell them that it's kind of like a nurse, but you know, it's cooler. <laughs> so that's what this video is about today. It's to help people who want to know what respiratory therapist is, what respiratory therapists do in the hospital. And if you ever get asked this question, you can either just refer to this video or you can gain some information from this video and go ahead and explain it to them what you're either going to school for, what you're looking into, or what you do as a career. So this video is going to be two parts. It's going to be a bit of a longer video. The first part of this video is going to be me discussing the basics of what a respiratory therapist is. And if you're still interested, you can check out part two. Or if you're interested in respiratory therapy in general, make sure you check out the rest of my YouTube channel and check out all the videos on respiratory therapy. So a respiratory therapist is a healthcare professional who specializes in cardiopulmonary. We are also specialized in sleep therapy. So what we do is we therapeutically work with people who are either suffering from acute or chronic issues involving any of these things and we just make sure they get the best uh, plan that's possible to help them um, live a healthier life. We also work in emergency situations or in the ICU to make sure that our patients are breathing correctly. So what a respiratory therapist also does is they run the life support, aka known as the ventilator. Um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit in this video as well. So what does respiratory therapist do in the healthcare system? So what we do is we go ahead and analyze our patients. We uh, go ahead and do a physical exam, we listen to breath sounds, we get their history. We want to know a little bit about them, maybe if they ever smoked, what they did for an occupation or work throughout life. We just want to know if they have any lung issues going on or maybe any cardiac issues so we can prescribe them the best therapies to make sure they can actually breathe because as we all know, that's pretty important. So we also consult with the physicians to make sure they agree with this therapy or maybe the medications. We also may suggest different things to the physician or we may say, hey, I don't think this is a good idea or I think this is a good idea. Let's try this. Let's try that. And generally, um, respiratory therapists are pretty involved, so the physician go ahead and they'll take our consideration. So the best part of my job is we go ahead and collect blood specimens as well as mucus specimens. So anything that comes out of the lungs, I want to go ahead and collect that and analyze it. Yummy, right? <laughs> so um, with the blood, we go ahead and get ABGs, also known as arterial blood gases. Basically, lets us know the pH and all the chemistry that's going on in the blood. Um, we can do a whole lot with different things to go ahead and compensate or get that pH to get back to where it's supposed to. I'm going to talk about all that in a different video. One of my favorite things that I do as a respiratory therapist is I manage the ventilators. So this can either be in an acute uh, situation or a chronic situation. So acute situation, someone gets in a car accident, they get shot, they get stabbed, they fall, whatever. Um, they come in and they can't breathe on their own, so we will put a tube in their throat and then we'll go ahead and hook them up to the ventilator and breathe for them. So what we do is we also collaborate with the physicians on this and figure out the best settings. Okay, how many breaths per minute do we want this guy to breathe? Um, how big a breath do we want him to breathe? Because if he has a collapsed lung, we may not want to do the exact same thing for that person as we're doing for another person. So many different things we have taken into consideration. And then on the chronic side, um, there are some people who may have had like a chronic brain injury and therefore they need a trachea. So basically this is an artificial airway, goes in the neck and some people can't breathe on their own. So therefore they wear a ventilator all the time. As I said, respiratory therapists uh, respond to all the emergency situations that go on in the hospital. So this may be down in the ED, um, if it has to do with respiratory or the lungs. Or if someone is going into cardiac arrest throughout the hospital, respiratory therapy is there. So we make sure we manage the airway, the patient can breathe. This may include uh, bagging the patient or giving them artificial breaths and breathing for them or hooking them up to a ventilator because they can't breathe on their own and we need to go ahead and make sure they're breathing. We also want to educate patients and make sure they understand their diseases, what medications they're taking, why they're taking certain medications. We want to educate the patients as well as their family to make sure that they understand their diseases, uh, what to do and what not to do. So basically if someone has asthma and they're allergic to dogs, we don't want them to go to a dog grooming shop where there's hair everywhere. So what kind of diseases does a respiratory therapist work with? So like I said, um, many different times we work with a boatload of diseases, however I'm just going to name a few that are very common. So some of those include um, 
acute respiratory distress syndrome. So this is basically when the lungs are very inflamed for different reasons. It could be COVID, for example, or maybe if the person aspirated or swallowed something and it went down the lungs and caused everything to act up. Um, the person may need to go on a ventilator for this. They may need to go on BiPAP, a CPAP, all different devices that I'm going to talk about a little bit that we use. So um, bronchitis, bronchiolitis, emphysema, COPD, cystic fibrosis, sleep apnea, um, or different patients may have Parkinson's disease or Alzheimer's, a whole lot of different uh, diseases. Maybe some of these patients are acute or chronic. It all depends. So like I said, uh, respiratory therapists kind of work in the ICU, or we do work in the ICU, I should say. So therefore, a bunch of different things in the ICU as things that could be chronic, um, maybe acute. So once again, someone gets in a car accident, um, they can't breathe or they just need breathing medications. We'll go ahead and assist them with that. So what kind of therapies are we doing with this patient? So in the hospital setting or any setting that a respiratory therapist may work, the respiratory therapist goes ahead and gives them breathing exercises to do. So if someone got in a car accident or maybe they fell and have a bunch of broken ribs, they're not going to be taking deep breaths like they should be. So therefore not everything is moving, they're more likely to get pneumonia. And if you get pneumonia on top of broken ribs, that is not a good sign. So we want to make sure that we give these patients therapy and make sure that they're breathing adequately so that doesn't happen. So typically we have different devices that allow these patients to take big old deep breaths. And we just do that with them every so often uh, throughout the day to make sure that we don't get pneumonia. We also have different um, therapies that we do to make sure that we get all the secretions out for these patients because once again, broken ribs, they don't want to cough because that hurts. So we make sure that they get all that gunk out because having all that in there is not good either. As I said, we work um, in the ICU. We respond to all the emergency situations. We work with trauma as well. Um, some respiratory therapists can even work in transport or um, like a flight team. So. Like uh, the helicopter comes in, picks people up, brings them to the hospital in an emergency situation, a respiratory therapist could potentially be on that team and help save a person's life. So the hospital I work at is a trauma center and that's one of the things I absolutely love is people come in and I need to think on my feet, I need to act right away because if I don't, the patient could potentially die and I definitely do not want that. So what do I do in this situation? As I said, I may put a tube in the patient's throat to go ahead and go down their lungs, hook them up to the ventilator to breathe, I may put them on a BiPAP or a CPAP. So this is basically a mask that goes over the patient's face and it helps breathe for them, it assists them in their breathing. Um, it's not as invasive as a ventilator would be or a tube going on the patient's throat. Um, we can also put a very high amount of oxygen going into the patient, 100%, so that means they're breathing nothing but oxygen. A uh, bunch of different things that we can do for that. So once we take these patients from the trauma center or the trauma area, we bring them up to the ICU, we take care of them there. That's when we really get to the vent management and figure out what's best for a patient rather than just that emergency situation. So we want to go ahead and make sure that they're ready to come off the ventilator. So that's another thing we do is we take the patients off of the ventilator, we'll pull that tube out, make sure that they can breathe, they can bring up their secretions. Um, because we do not want to put them back on, that'll be taking a step backwards and we definitely do not want that. So unfortunately one downside as being a respiratory therapist is I said we take people off of the ventilator. Sometimes we don't always take them off to continue living. So what I mean by this is if somebody has no sign of life whatsoever or they're going to live a very poor life, we may pull the tube out and let the person pass away. So I had to do this a lot with COVID. That was probably one of the hardest things, especially since family wasn't there. Um, personally, I had to hold an iPad right after I pulled the tube for someone and have the family say goodbye. That was a little difficult. I definitely hope that I never have to do that again. It's kind of hard even with family being there. Most times I ask them to step out when I pull the tube out and then allow the family to come in and say their final goodbyes as the patient passes. So therefore, we are the people who Pull the plug. I know, fun, right? <laughs> we don't get paid enough for that. However, that is not the one thing I want you to take away from this video because there have been plenty, plenty of stories I have where people, I put them on a ventilator, we didn't think they were gonna come off, and then they finally turn around because we helped them um, along with all the nurses and the doctors. These people continue living their lives and then they come back and tell us amazing stories. So I've had patients who 
young people who've fallen off a roof, hit their head. Um, we thought they were going to be brain dead for the rest of their life or have an anoxic injury and kind of just be on the ventilator. However, they made a fantastic recovery, went to therapy afterwards, went to rehab, came back, walked in like nothing ever happened. It was amazing. I also had another patient who uh, we thought we were going to die, who we, we, who we thought was going to die from uh, cardiac issues, he went to cardiac arrest. Well, anyway, we put him on the ventilator, we did CPR on him, so his heart actually did stop. Um, the very next day, he went to the cath lab, got a bunch of heart stuff done, and then he was actually able to walk his daughter down the aisle a few months later, which is just crazy. He came back and told us that story, thanked us. So that is one of the great things about being a respiratory therapist is, yes, we do have some bad things that we have to deal with, but we also have amazing other stories as well. In my opinion, there are so many more pros and cons. So to summarize this video, respiratory therapists work all over the hospital. We work in the emergency department, we work in the ICU, all the different ICUs. Um, we work on the floors with patients. We do different therapies, we give medications, we explain to patients why they're getting certain medications. Um, we go ahead and teach patients different therapies that they can do to help manage their secretions, increase their uh, ability to live, uh, just increase their everyday activity. We evaluate patients to make sure they're getting the correct therapy, the best therapy, the best medications, um, once again, so they can just go back to their normal living and just have the best life. We run the ventilators, we run uh, CPAP, BiPAP, high flow, and many other devices that are going to assist people for breathing. Um, maybe if some people can't cough, we go ahead and uh, do a cough simulator. Where there are just so many different devices that we can do to make sure the medication gets down to where it's supposed to. Just so many different therapies. Um, I'm going to talk a lot about them in some of my other videos. So make sure you guys check that out. So if you're enjoying this video so far, um, make sure you check out all my other videos so you can understand what a respiratory therapist is. If you guys have any questions about respiratory therapists in general right now, just leave in the comments and I hope this video helped. See you in the next one.